So the, uh, the next demo I'd like to show is one that goes in a different direction. This one showed taking an existing source base and compiling it so that we could bring it forward to .NET. Next one's an entirely new source base. It's completely verifiable. And it um, uses some of the um, interesting APIs that we have in, um, in DirectX to do managed programming. And at the same time, shows some of the new features that Visual C++ 2005 has for doing mixed language development. Oh, I already had it open. Let me get you the one I've already got. That was a read-only NCB. OK. So what we have here is a collection of projects. Um, and what we're showing is the fact that you can do not only mixing of C++ and other languages in different projects within a solution, as we've done here. We've got C++ projects and we've got C Sharp projects. But in Visual Studio 2005, you can also mix languages within a project. So whereas each of these projects corresponds to a different binary, we already know we can have different language binaries to communicate with each other. In 2005, you can have multiple languages in the same single file assembly, all talking to each other, and that works seamlessly. So for example here, we've got some C++ code. Um, first, let me explain what this does. Um, what this does, it's a, um, it's a Rubik's Cube renderer and solver. Um, so you can create Rubik's Cubes that bounce around on the screen and solve themselves as they're bouncing around. Um, and um, that's all done using the Manage DirectX stuff. And what we've done here is in the UI for this, uh, for this particular application, uh, we have a lot of the core computation stuff happening in C++. That's where you're usually going to get your best performance, where you have the most power and flexibility and control over the application. But there are some things that are really nice that you'd like to do in other languages. Uh, for example, the code that gets generated by the, um, by the C-sharp designers for WinForms is really nice. Um, we have the same designer code, but for example, we don't spit our code out separated into headers and CPP files. And, and in this case, they've actually got backing stuff in the .designer file in Ruby, so it's really nice. Um, so you might want to do your WinForms UI using C-sharp. And then some of your, maybe you've got some folks who um, do VB on your team, and they're really productive with VB, and you want to have some of your operation stuff handled by VB. And that's what we've got here. The same executable we've got, C++, C Sharp, and VB. So let's see what this looks like. I hit F5. And first, I hit my breakpoint in my C Sharp form. right? And I can go ahead and hit F10. And the next thing I call into after hitting F10 is my VB, all in the, same uh, in the same executable. So I can go down, and the next thing I'm going to do after in my VB is read out some XML, which some of these XML files can get big, so we have that in C++. So I go there, hit F10, and now I'm in C++. And notice this is the new syntax with our, with our handle into the GC heap, and we're using null pointer instead of zero. We've got our GC new and various other nice language features. Um, so what I've done here, in the same file, in, you know, all the debug stuff is working. Uh, all the, the IntelliSense for the C Sharp and the C++ are working. It is go from C Sharp to VB to C++ just stepping through. So let's see what we actually get as far as the result when I hit F5. Here we've got our Rubik's Cube, which is bouncing around the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and randomize it. And I can, actually, one of the nice things about this implementation is you can choose um, cubes of arbitrary size. So I'm going to choose a 5x5 five five cube. And I'm going to go ahead and randomize it and create it. And I go back into one of my breakpoints. I hit F5. And now I have a 5x5 five five randomized cube. And if I want to solve this thing, I can just go ahead and step through the solver sequence, and it goes ahead and solves itself. Most of the core rendering code is in C++, the forms code all in C Sharp, a lot of the operational stuff all being handled in VB. And of course, this has a plug-in model, so I've got multiple different representations here. That's the DirectX rendering. And of course, you can also do a flat layout. Um, this, nice. this is something, by the way, that is um, we're currently working on, an, on a more visually impressive version um, that allows you to like map textures onto the various faces. Uh, and we're going to be posting this to um, msdn.microsoft.com slash visual c probably by the time this video gets posted. Cool.
that would be nice, interesting to see that run in Avalon. You're going to post the source code? We'll post the source code, the, and the, um, the solution and project files will all work for, um, for the beta. I mean, that's a, that's a huge new feature, the, so the multi-language per project. Mm -hmm. Is work multi-language per project available in, in all types of projects or only C++ projects? So the, the way we make it work is through the C++ linker. So um, the C++ linker can now consume .NET modules. And it doesn't matter if these .NET modules were generated by the VB or the C Sharp compiler or, or even the C++ compiler. Um, so one important point before talking about the project system is if you're doing this from the command line, C++ doesn't actually even have to be in the picture. If you've got some VB and some C Sharp and you just want to link those together and you're not interested in C++, that's fine, you can do that. One of the major motivations we had for doing this feature goes back to the enabling people to leverage their existing investments in technology. And if you have made investments in C Sharp, um, we're not going to hold that against you. If you want to be able to use that from C++ and if it falls out and it has, that you can also use that without C++ being in the picture, we definitely support it. Uh, the way you used to have to do this was terrible. You, you would have to, if you wanted to get something like this where you'd have multiple languages in the same single file assembly, you'd have to IL DASM all the .NET modules and then put them together in a big text file and then re them sure. and hope that you didn't have any dependencies among them because then you'd have to fix the text up manually. In this case, by the way, you can create rich dependencies among these guys. Um, getting to the project system, unfortunately that is a limitation. Uh, the C Sharp and VB project systems don't allow you to produce .NET modules if you're using their project system. Uh, what you can do is do your VB and C Sharp development within the C++ project system, um, which has some downsides because not all of the um, not all of the new C Sharp and VB features are supported through our project system. Um, but you can also go ahead and do this using a little script that you call out using a custom build rule that will do the .NET module generation and the linking. So it is possible to do there. Unfortunately, it, uh, it isn't really easy. There, there are actually lots of good reasons for not being able to build .NET modules out of the project system. So. But I mean, this is targeting C++ developers. And what it's doing is it's giving them powerful tools for jobs at hand. For example, yeah. you're doing WinForm UI work in a very elegant and simple to learn language like C Sharp. Yet your core instrumentation, your core uh, computational algorithms are going to be written in a language that you know mm -hmm. and you're going to give you the power that you need. So all, in the same, all in the same project. Yep. It's, amazing. It's, it's excellent. So it's, 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 it's the type of thing where you can, you can leverage your existing code if you have it. Or, you know, as you're saying, if you've got a mix of developers on your team, some of them are really good to C++ and some of them are really good to C Sharp and VB, you can have them do the parts of the project that are most appropriate to their skill set and have it all linked together without creating any extra binaries that are an artifact of the build system because that artifact is, is now eliminated.